Hey, little panda wands. Beautiful Sunday for you all, or to you all, I should say. I don't know if it is beautiful for you. I had some time in between projects, so I am just going to chill out for a little bit and do some brutal doodling. I uh, don't really know what I'm going to draw. It looks like it's going to be some kind of dwarf, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, just thought I would... Uh, do actually a video and just see uh, see what comes out of this uh, little draw session. And maybe I, I could always uh, do a time lapse or whatever, but I, I think I'm just going to do a, do some drawing instead of a uh, time lapse. Just kind of I'll just kind of blather on as I'm talking. I'm sure I'll fall silent on some stuff, but yeah, I like drawing dwarfs. They're always uh, they're always fun. Squat, hairy. Bearded, usually drinking, you know. I can I can relate with that kind of life. <laughs> Looks like he's got a little hammer there or something like that. We'll give him a little cloak too. Keep him warm against the winter snow. Be holding up. Let's do a mug. Or let's do a horn. Raise your horns. <laughs> That's a cool Monomar song. If you if you're not familiar with it, give it a give it a listen. Or I could go Hammerfall style. I could do Hammer High. Ooh, big old hammer. A hammer horn. How would I do that? Let's just stick with the horn for now. He's got the hammer down here. Hammer down. Well, maybe we can make it an axe too. Axes are always fun to draw when they're stuck in the ground. Hammers are, are fun, but uh, I, do, I do a lot of hammers. <laughs> Not with my day job and with my, with my secondary uh, day job. <laughs> yeah, I just did a, a, a video for the process for Hammer of Dawn, the new Hammerfall album, so check it out if you haven't. It was pretty fun. And I do have some more artwork from that album. Uh, there's some there's some artwork still to show, so hopefully uh, be able to uh, do a process on that. Like I don't I don't save a lot of my progress. Like I, I it's always just drawing first, and then I'll do a, oh look at all the different stages I have, and I can do that. I'm gonna give the dwarf horns. Let's do horns. Could do wings. I always like wings for some reason, but my uh, my one of my characters. Uh, Grimbeard has a, a winged like uh, what do you call it? Captain's hat because he's a he's a a pirate, and uh, he's he's kind of like a, a Robin Hood. It's it's uh, he robs from the elves and gives to himself. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun story. Speaking of dwarves, it's uh, basically about this this dwarf, Captain Grimbeard. He's the last dwarf in the world, and the world is run by. Uh, elves now it's it's a futuristic society now like because he basically in one of the stories you'll uh, you can read about it but he uh, he has a little bit too much to consume one night uh, with some potent potent brews and ends up being passed out for thousands of years and then wakes up in the futuristic world ruled by elves it's, uh, it's like friggin robot unicorns and and uh, elf and bounty hunters now after him because he's the last dwarf, and you know they wanted to wipe out the dwarves from existence. I guess you know elves, uppity, aloof. Um, but yeah, so he's uh, he's the last dwarf in a uh, world ruled by elves. So he assembles a crew with his uh, on his ship, the old girl, which uh, basically is a is a a dragon ship, but in the Grimbeard world, it's a dragon ship because his his ship is surrounded by the bones of an ancient dragon. That uh, So now his ship can fly and all that and compete with all the, the high-tech Pegasus-class warships that the elves have and, and their royal LV, LV navy and all that kind of stuff. So so yeah, I guess this is kind of looking like a, like a Grimbeard-type dude. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to keep doodling away on this. Uh, and uh, if you, I guess if you have any questions, you can always put it in the comments or whatever. One day I'll do these live, but I'm still working my way around figuring out uh, how to do all that crap. 
all that stuff. Sorry, children. I do like to do those little cheeks there. I actually got that from uh, Uderzo, who did the artwork for the Asterix comics. If you're not familiar with Asterix and Obelix, you ought to check those out. Those were a huge, huge influence on my my art style, even so much so that um, when we were working on Lost Vikings, um, I used a lot of the, the kind of similar uh, art style to help, help make the, uh, the Lost Vikings. Yeah, they're great. They're, I think, yeah, they're from uh, from France. Uh, they even have an Asterix world there. I never got to go there. I've only been to, uh, I think it was Paris once or, yeah, I went to Paris for a work thing and then, uh, is it Lelisi, something like that, for Hellfest, which was super fun. Super fun. But yeah, I didn't get a chance to go check out the Asterix world, which I would have loved to. Big old foamy horn. One of my uh, favorite sayings is cheers and beers. But I also say uh, cheers and beers, shout for stout, and all hail the ale. Yeah, I do love me some ales. I think my favorite, uh, like favorite beers, or adult sarsaparillas, um, I do love German beer. German beer is fantastic, but I also love English ales, uh, and the the specifically like brown ales. And it doesn't even have to be English. Uh, like my 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 favorite beer is probably Firestone Double Barrel Ale. I think it's you know it's real light, five percent alcohol, nothing too too potent, but it's just one of the best tasting uh, best tasting beers around, and. Uh, my buddy uh, is a brewer, and he would make this one called, which I got to name, uh, it's called the Whore's Promise. And it was, uh, oh, I'm forgetting what type, what type of beer it is. What was it called? I'll remember it later on. But these things were so potent. I think they were like 13% alcohol, and you could really only have one, and then you'd want to, uh, uh, it's a braggart, braggart, braggart? I'm a braggart. It's a braggart. Um, but you could only really have one of those. And we would have uh, our brother's weekends. We'd go up to Big Bear um, at the cabin. We would play Dungeons and Dragons. I would do all my, the, the, the grilling and cooking and all that. I would make, you know, red beans and rice, Louisiana red beans and rice for my family. And uh, we would grill up steaks and all that. My buddy would, would, um, make the beer and then my other buddy other brother right he the one who actually uh, gave me the nickname panda which started the whole pandaren stuff um he would create the adventure because he was our our dungeon master so everybody would uh kind of create something and bring to bring to the mountain and we would have all you know a weekend there hanging out drinking beer eating good grub and uh playing playing dungeons and dragons that was always a always a fun weekend. Need to do one of those again. It's been over a year, yeah, a year since February. But 
Yeah, are you guys uh, big D and D fans or anything? You know, another uh, another one that I've been playing is called Delta Green, uh, same DM. And uh, yeah, you can actually check out uh, his podcast, Roll the Hard Twenty, uh, on YouTube. And uh, it's got his uh, regular group. It's got uh, me and the other brothers playing on some Delta Green. I think I'm in a one or two of the Dungeons and Dragons ones with my uh, my, my Dragonborn warrior Tyrannus as a, a guest player. It was the one that I used to play when we would all play together in a group. And then with his uh, n new group, uh, I was uh, like a, a guest appearance uh, in one of the one or two of the episodes and uh, came to blows with the with the group luckily I survived because there were I think three or four of them and only one of me but I was Tyrannus you can't take down the dragon that easy boys now that is a why is this frozen there we go I think it's chugging because I'm recording that's a wimpy ass boot right there dwarves need better boots than that so let's give them some Shin armor, that looks like a boob, sorry. We'll fix that. Not shin, knee. I know my body parts. All right. Give him some cool dwarven treads. Yeah, Delta Green is uh, is a fun series. It's basically, I think it's like a, an offshoot of Call of the Cthulhu, an old... Uh, old RPG game back from the, the 80s where it basically dealt with, you know, the, the HP Lovecraft mythos, Cthulhu and all that kind of stuff. Well, this one is kind of like that still, but it's basically like an X-Files. It's your, you know, secret government organization. The world is, you know, coming under thrall and sway of these, these outside or, uh, you know, forces. And you're basically just trying to prevent it from happening. Give him one of those elbow pads too. So there's our little fun little dwarf. It also would be fun to draw. You know, I used to, <laughs> I brought this up. I was recently watching um, a documentary on Iron Maiden. And I remember as a kid drawing Eddie, their mascot, from the Killers album. That was like the first album that introduced me to Iron Maiden. So I used to draw that on my sketchbooks all the time. I wonder if I can, uh, let's shrink this boy down. I wonder if I can remember how I draw Eddie. Let's see. Let's scale you down, man. It's a happy, good-looking dwarf. And what I'll do is I'm just going to do a bunch of these sketches. And what I'll probably do is is later on take them and maybe polish them or color them up. I don't I don't know, but uh, yeah, I want to do something where I can just do a bunch of these kind of little sketch videos and then just post them. You know, when I wake up early in the mornings. Uh, yeah, we'll call yeah yeah we'll call it Sunrise with Samwise. How's that? <laughs> Shit. Uh, you know your jokes are good when you're the only one laughing at it. So yeah, this is. I'm gonna try to draw this from memory. It's Eddie from the Killers uh, album cover, and I always want to put the little uh, the little bolt there that he has on the later albums from like Peace of Mind and stuff like that. But. Uh, yeah, I remember that drawing and um, also the one from, what was it called? The Nazareth band, Hair of the Dog or something like that. But they had this this killer artwork. What was his name? Is it Rodney Matthews that did that? I think Rodney Matthews um, did that. But it was so, so awesome. He had the big old poofy 80s hair. I think it was kind of like a widow's peak. I can't remember. This one actually looks a little bit happy. I'll have to go over this and make make it a little bit cooler. And I remember his little shirt sleeve. It looked like a bell to me because it was. And he had the kind of pushed out. Well, let's finish the arm. It was. I remember drawing this hand, and I've I've used this hand numerous times since uh, since this. Oh, I just got a text. Sorry if you guys heard that. He had his hand. I think it curved under. Yeah, and then he had another one here. I think 
his shirt, yeah, his shirt was being pulled down, but and he had the, the arm, yeah, this hand too, I remember was really cool because you could see the bottom of it. Derek Riggs was friggin' awesome, man. I loved all those old Iron Maiden album covers. So bitchin'. Big influence, big influence. Man, I remember going into a Licorice Pizza. It was a record store back in the day. I don't remember if it axe handle curves or not. Um, but they would have posters for like Number of the Beast and uh, I haven't saved yet. I probably should do that. Screw it. We're doing it live. Um, Number of the Beast and, you know, The Trooper. Uh, that was such a, that was probably one of my favorite al uh, album covers. It was for the single. That's when they had the import albums. And I think he kind of showed a little. Uh, what I remember was funny, too, is he, he had like one of the original butt and chest shots you know everyone gets all riled when they see that you know it's like oh you can't you can't do that bullshit eddie fucking did it sorry i'm cursing now i should mellow out hand here pulling down his shirt and i re <laughs> sorry i'm blathering now i remember thinking that he was wearing a, a yellow shirt when i was little but it was this yellow lighting um on the front of his shirt on uh, on you know this side area um but it was a white t-shirt from what I remember. He had the hand carving. Obviously it's not as, yeah, it was something like that, right? Andy from Killers. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Let's go in a little bit, at least detail up the face a little bit. I, what I remember was cool is like he had these like black eyes with like a little highlight. But yeah, the Iron Maiden stuff, peace of mind, I remember. That's when I started getting into Iron Maiden was peace of mind. Um, or that was the time I got into Iron Maiden when peace of mind came out. So that was like, I guess, 83. I think Killers was 82. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it couldn't have been because Number of the Beast was after Killers. But yeah, I remember when peace of mind came out, that was the time that I started getting into Iron Maiden. And then I was, I was a buyer of uh power slate when that came out yeah power slate was freaking awesome that cover and then well geez yeah i guess it was 86 was uh somewhere in time and that one the that album was just insane the cover on that it was you know wrap around it had the band in it and had all these references from the songs like the rhyme of the ancient mariner i don't know if it was a cafe or something like that and so awesome Good job, Derek Riggs, man. Um, and I think his last one was, was it No Prayer for the Dying? Which was an okay one. It was it was a uh, weird perspective showing Eddie like reaching out from the grave, grabbing some, I guess it was a grave robber. But I think that was his last one and then released the album. And I think Fear of the Dark was the, the, a, a new guy. I don't I don't know the guy's name. Sorry, but that was, that was pretty cool too. It's all artwork. Some stuff is awesome. Some stuff is still cool, but it's not, you know, genre defining or whatever. But those first, I'll even say all the way up to, uh, uh, sorry, somewhere in time, uh, those Maiden ones, the, you know, first one Maiden through somewhere in time, those are all just fantastic. And the singles too. I think that axe is a lot more deadly looking than and it had little blood and all that kind of stuff um but yeah man heavy metal album covers those were i remember being scared of some of those when i was little and and uh all kinds of all kinds of just cool artwork from there i think this is wrong i think he had a longer forearm but and that looks like a pig hoof that doesn't even look like a hand but it was something like that right and he had a belt, right? That belt's kind of low, but that's okay. On his, on his sweet shape behind. Isn't that that Neil Diamond song? Sweet shape behind. Ah. Always wanted to do a Neil Diamond cover band. Call it Steel Diamond. An all metal tribute to Neil Diamond. Frog Prince. I never knew, I never understood. Like at Neil Diamond concerts, they always had shirts. Uh, that had like a little frog prince or king on it. I, I, I didn't know what it was until I, I remember 
on the the lyrics for uh, I am I said uh, the lyrics go he's like uh, have you ever dreamed about a frog who dreamed of being a king something like that and then became one so I think uh, here I'm gonna look up Eddie let me uh, let me look up Eddie let's see Oop, bang the mic sorry Eddie killers album uh, uh, kind of close but my uh, my quick drawing doesn't really do it justice it looks probably better than I not as good as what I let's see kind of paste it here yep there it is <laughs> that is F and awful well done I guess I since I haven't drawn it since I was like 12 years old yeah see look at that look at his the yellow shirt, which is not yellow, and his getting the booty shot and the chesticle shot. So when people say that can't happen, it can because I saw Eddie do it. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's minimize this awfulness. Actually, I got a great place to store that. We'll store it right there. Boom. Oh, no, I lost it forever. Oh, no. Uh, then what, what should we draw now? Let's do like a, just a some kind of fun monstery. Type, uh, I don't know. We'll see what it shapes up to be. Here's some eyes. What the hell kind of weird head is that? You see, my it almost looks like a hippo. <laughs> uh, I think my machine is kind of chugging because of I'm running the program and I got a big file open. I got some other files open still too. I think from below. funny I put in that nose I immediately start going toward the orc side I can't help it I love drawing orcs I think you guys like orcs too I always joke, I'm a, not a one-trick pony, I'm a three-trick pony. It's orcs and dwarves and brutal doodles. <laughs> sure, nice beard. I always wondered how monsters like that with their tusks coming out. I guess it's kind of like a a boar or something like that. But I always wonder how they talk with, you know, they got their things in the side of their mouth. <laughs> like trying to talk with a mouthful of ivory. I guess elephants do it. So why not humanoids? Well, we'll just finish this this little drawing up and make a video of that. Oh, you like how those teeth go? I just three lines in there. <laughs> That's the fun thing about just doodling monster doodling monsters. That actually sounds a little naughty. About uh, making doodles, uh, you can kind of just throw stuff around if it doesn't, especially with monsters. If it doesn't line up or it's not symmetrical, it's okay. They're monsters. They're supposed to look ugly and malformed. What do you guys think on the uh, of the two, the dwarf and this this monstery? I don't know what it is, ogrey, orky type thing. Which one should I uh, clean up and uh, and take to a more polished level? You can let me know. And like I said, I'll figure out, get some time, and can maybe do this. Uh, do it live. And uh, maybe we can ask, answer questions if you guys have any. How come you're such an asshole? Ah, I was born that way.
His eye looks a little too far out. Magic Photoshop. Boom, bring it in. I always call it Photoshop cheatery. It's like, well, it's not cheating because I could do it on paper. I just, I would have to erase and be a little bit more focused on that. Not making mistakes, but here, make all the mistakes you want. Oh no, undo. <laughs> earring and his ear has like a big ear hole in it because he's been wearing earrings that are too heavy for him all right come to think of it I probably should have saved that Eddie that would have been some some good uh, good comments on that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. All right, let's scale this boy down. All right, well, that's not too bad. I could keep going longer, I think, but uh, I probably should get back to real job stuff. Not real job, but real work assignments like this. It was kind of fun doodling it, but I'm ahead on projects now, but like, uh, who is that, Artosis and them? Uh, said, when you're ahead, keep getting ahead. I absolutely agree with that. You know, it's good to have fun and all that, but... Well, you know, <laughs> this will probably get me a lot of heat in the comments. Maybe not. You know, they say, uh, you know, you should live your life like there's no tomorrow. I get it. It's a nice sentiment, but I'm almost, what, 52 now? And for f almost 52 years, there's always been a tomorrow, right? <laughs> there's always been a tomorrow. So uh, I would rather live my life thinking, you know what? I'm finished today. But tomorrow is, tomorrow is coming. So get your ass ready. Sorry, get your butt ready because tomorrow is coming and it's going to eat you up unless you're prepared. So let's, uh, sure, let's sign off with that then. How about we say live like there is a tomorrow because tomorrow is coming and you better be prepared. And then aside from that, you know, thanks for listening to me blather and all that and, uh, We'll see you soon. Remember your ABCs, Panda Ones. Always be creating. Cheers and bears. Oh, and shout for stout and all hail the ale. <laughs> Later.